Respect for IHL is only possible if belligerents trust their adversary when they rely on the protection afforded by that law. The purpose of the prohibition of perfidy is to avoid the breaking of such a trust and any ensuing adverse consequences for IHL. Perfidy is a specific type of deception of the enemy. It implies three main elements. First, a subjective element, the intent to betray the confidence given to an adversary. Second, an objective element, that confidence must relate to the protection under the rule of IHL. And third, the betrayal of such a confidence must lead to the killing, injuring or capturing of the adversary. In other words, the central element of perfidy is a deliberate claim to legal protection for hostile purposes, in particular to kill, injure or capture the enemy. Article 37 of Additional Protocol 1, which prohibits perfidy, gives a list of examples and helps to add meaning to the concept. It includes, and I quote it, the feigning of an intent to negotiate under a flag of truce or of a surrender, the feigning of an incapacitation by wounds or sickness, the feigning of civilian non-combatant status, and the feigning of protected status by the use of signs emblems or uniforms of the United Nations or of neutral or other states not parties to the conflict. The example of feigning of civilian non-combatant status was discussed in depth when drafting Additional Protocol 1. A number of states were concerned that the prohibition of perfidy rendered all kinds of guerrilla warfare illegal. They argue that any guerrilla combatant was risk, would risk breaching the prohibition of perfidy, since, as we have seen when analyzing the notion of combatant under Article 44 of Additional Protocol 1, they do not have to distinguish themselves from the civilian population at any time, and must only carry their arms openly in case of military engagements. The problem was solved by the inclusion in Article 44 of the qualification that any act complying with the, with the requirements of distinction provided by that article could not be considered as an act of perfidy. In any case, perfidy is only prohibited insofar as it leads to the killing, injuring or capturing of the enemy. For example, feigning death to save one's life is not an act of perfidy, but feigning death to kill an enemy once his back is turned would amount to perfidy. These are clear examples, but there are more ambiguous scenarios. For instance, it is not clear whether raising the white flag for the sole purpose of delaying an attack falls under this prohibition. Although this would not directly involve the killing, injuring or capturing of the enemy, this may indirectly lead to the same result. The degree of causality required for an act to be perfidious remains contentious. The use of recognized emblems for improper purposes is prohibited, irrespective of the consequences. Belligerents are prohibited to use emblems, insignia or uniforms of neutral parties or the adversary while engaging in attacks or in order to shield, favor, protect or impede military operations. These acts alone would not necessarily amount to acts of perfidy. Examples of this practice include improper uses of the distinctive emblem of the Red Cross or the protective emblem of cultural property, as well as emblems of nationality including those of neutral states or of the adversary. Such acts are prohibited separately in Articles 38 and 39 of Additional Protocol 1. Finally, acts of perfidy as well as prohibited uses of emblems 
must be distinguished from another types of deception of the enemy. The ruses of war, which are not prohibited under IHL. Article 37 of Additional Protocol 1 defines ruses of war as acts, and I quote it, intended to mislead an adversary or to induce him to act recklessly, but which infringe no rule of international law applicable in armed conflict. The rules of international law referred to in this provision include the prohibition of perfidy. The leading examples of ruses of war include the use of camouflage, decoys, mock operation, and misinformation. According to the RCRC commentary of Additional Protocol 1, a ruse of war can resort to acoustic means, such as simulating the noise of an advancing column, optical means, creation of fictitious positions, the use of information, circulating misleading messages, or operational means, simulated attacks.